Now, this video is explaining how GDOS works and how the drivers and the fonts uh, allow the Atari SE to put out the different devices. Now, I'm not going to go into all the detail about GDOS. Uh, there's a diagram of how it operates along with the GEM desktop and TOS. We're mainly going to focus on the stuff on the right-hand side. So GDOS uh, is the operating system that's loaded on top of TOS. It includes the font files um, and the device drivers that talk to each one of the printers or scanners or whatever, even screens, uh, and a meta file. And it does this upon boot. It reads the assigned sys file, which has all these different drivers and fonts, to where you can locate those drivers and those font files in order to use them. Now it's just a text file, and here are the different sections where it loads each one of the different uh, system files and the drivers and the fonts for that particular one. A couple interesting facts. First of all, they're not loaded at boot up, not even the resident ones. If they can't find that particular file you have in your assigned sys file, no big deal, it moves on. And then those fonts are also unloaded uh, after that application. And finally, the file name doesn't mean anything. It can be wrongly named or whatever. It may not be the right file. It reads the information from the actual values in the file. To install GDOS, that depends upon which version uh, you're using. If you're using NVDI or SpeedDOS, but I use G+. And here's a, it uses the same directory structure. There's all your funds in the GEMSYS directory. Uh, it depends upon the program, but this one uses G plus program in order to load the fonts. Now, if you're using GDOS instead of G plus, or if you're using some other program, they'll always use that assigned sys file in the GEMSYS directory. You just load up whatever ones you want uh, in those directories. And again, you go back to the, uh, the auto directory probably, and you'll find the program uh, that you need to run in order to uh, access uh, GDOS functions. Now to demonstrate this, I brought up EasyDraw, which is a 2D drawing program, which I used a lot back in the day. Uh, and you'll see here, if I go up here to text, you see the different types of or uh, modifications of the font, the different sizes that are loaded, uh, and the different fonts, typeface. And now it does that by loading up uh, those files during boot, almost. Uh, I'm going to throw a little wrinkle in here. I use a program called G+, which assigns font files based on the application that you're running. And I'm going to have a separate video on it. So I'm going to bring up a file here, some stuff I did back in the, well, in the 80s, I think. Uh, and here's a landscape uh, of a drawing I did for the SR71. And it comes up, and there you'll see the use of the font, uh, the SR71 font. It shows which ones are selected. Uh, during the drawing operation. So if I go down here, you'll see some other uh, text that I put in there with different fonts and uh, different sizes. Now that was easy to draw. So I just uh, go back to the desktop here and I'm going to run a different program. Any one of these will load up its own particular fonts if it uses uh, GDOS. So I loaded up the Atari Works. And again, G Plus loaded the right fonts. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up a word processing file that I had here uh, and see what we get. Now, not to confuse things, but Atari Works handles fonts a little bit differently. If it doesn't find it, you can load an alternate font. And that's what it's doing. It's saying, oh, uh, I can select which ones I want. I'm just going to say replace all. And then when I click up here, it'll go ahead and just replace all of them with that. And updates the document. Uh, says it's up here and it's not saved, but there's the document uh, with the fonts that were loaded or loaded at the time and modified when I just uh, ran it this time. And uh, using, again, a different uh, menu system, you can format things there uh, and you can list your fonts and decide which ones you want to use. And these were loaded during the load of the program by reading the assigned sys file. So again, without uh, leaving the Atari rebooting or anything, I'm just going to cancel out here uh, and then come over here to uh, close the file. Um, actually, I can just quit it, but I go up here to file and then say quit and leave the program. And now I here I am back at the desktop. Now, if you remember correctly in the earlier portion, uh, GDOS unloads when it gets done. So wherever program has got it, it frees up the memory. 
So you can run a non-GDOS program or any other thing uh, without worrying about the uh, GDOS interfering. Now here's easy score. Uh, it doesn't use uh, fonts. So uh, you just go ahead and uh, run it the way you want and uh, it's perfectly fine. I know at first glance this may seem a little confusing and even vague, uh, but trust me, uh, this foundation of GDOS will allow you to take a look at some other uh, GDOS programs uh, for your system. It should give you the foundation to go in and take a look at uh, SpeedDOS or NVDI, and, but I think you'll, if you look at G+, you'll find an excellent resource. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want more, you can just click on subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook or Twitter. The links are in the description of the video.